What's on the menu when a chimp chows down? Is this gorilla as grouchy as he looks? Why do monkeys always monkey around? And what's all the racket about anyway? Well, the answers are all ahead, so hang on. It's National Geographic's Really Wild Animals. <laughs> Drop in, cause today we're gonna be... <laughs> As I was saying, today we're gonna be hanging with some of my favorite animals. Primates. That's right, primates. They're a swinging, screaming, singing group of animals that includes monkeys and apes. And I'm not the only one who likes them. At the zoo, primates are just about everyone's favorite animal. I think it's because they're a lot like people. <laughs> yes, people are part of the primate group. You're right, you're a primate too. Today we're going to hang with our hairy relatives to find out what being a primate is all about. Let the monkey business begin. See those monkeys in the trees? They sure do love to swing. They're a noisy howling, screaming butch when they're doing their monkey thing. They're grooming one another, showing off for a friend or two. It's monkey see and monkey do. Primates, primates, let's give a big thumbs up for primates, primates. What do all primates have in common? Well, they have two arms and two legs. They can stand or sit up straight, which leaves their hands free to do other things, like grab stuff, which is a lot more than your dog can do. Oh, and don't forget one other handy primate trait, opposable thumbs. Opposable means their thumbs can bend to touch all of their fingers so they can use their hands to hold things. Most animals can't do that. If you think opposable thumbs aren't important, uh, try eating without them. All primates, except for humans, even have an opposable toe on each foot. Wouldn't that be great for picking up your socks? They also come in handy, uh, footy, <laughs> for just hanging around, especially in trees where many primates live. Another thing most primates have in common is their big brains. And you know what they say. Big brain, smart animal. <laughs> in fact, scientists have found that primates are some of the most intelligent animals around. Hey, who's testing who around here anyway? 
primates have fairly flat faces with eyes facing front, not on the sides like most animals. Most primates see in full color too. This helps them separate the fruits from the roots, the figs from the twigs, and the berries from the, the, the um, oh, you get the idea. <laughs> Last but not least, most primates are social animals. They're always around friends and family. They like to hang with the gang and play lots of games. And they hug and kiss to say hi. Of course, primates do get on each other's nerves once in a while. And when they do, <laughs> watch out. <laughs> but don't worry, by dinner, all will be forgiven. Because most primates are terrific at um, uh, communicating. And, um, making up. Ah, oh, isn't that sweet? Welcome to the show that's more fun than a barrel full of orangutans. It's, you call that a primate? Our first contestant is Coco from Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey. It's up to you to figure out if she's a primate or not. Okay, she's getting up. She's standing on all fours. She can't walk on her hind legs. You call that a primate? Chuck, our next contestant, comes from Charleston, South Carolina. This guy looks more promising. He's up on his haunches and... Holy cow, he's picking up a nut. But let's go in for the close-up. Uh-uh-uh, no opposable thumb. Besides, his eyes are on the sides of his head. You call that a primate? Let's go to contestant number three, Felicia, a manatee from Florida, and she... Hey, wait a second. She doesn't even have hands or feet. What does she think we are, stupid? You call that a primate? And now our last contestant, Fred. Hey, this guy might just be the real deal. What do you say, folks? You call that a primate? That's right! He's standing up straight, and those forward-facing eyes and opposable thumbs make him the winner! Hooray! Hooray! All contestants on You Call That a Primate receive first-class travel on really wild airlines, as well as a year's supply of bugs and slugs. There are many different kinds of primates. Familiar ones like monkeys and apes, and the lesser-known prosimians, sometimes called the lower or more primitive primates. But don't tell them that. Let's travel to the south of Africa, to the island of Madagascar, to meet a pint-sized prosimian called the Ai-Ai. No, no, I said Ai-Ai, not Ai-Ai. Ai-Ai, Ai-Ai, Ai-Ai! The Ai-Ai comes out only at night to hunt for food. And check out how he does it. The eye eye listens with those big ears until he hears a tasty grub or insect moving around inside a plant. With a few taps of his extra long middle finger, he finds the grub's home. Using his sharp teeth, the eye eye bites open a hole, then he fishes around with that crazy finger. Yep! And in the time it takes to say goodbye, grub. That bug's been gobbled up. <clears throat> Want to meet another puny primate? Over in West Africa, the forests are just bounding with another prosimian. The bush baby, and I do mean bounding. A bush baby's legs are for leaping, but his hands are for grasping. This bush baby is about the size of a cat, and he looks like he's 90% he sees great at night, which is a good thing because that's when he runs around doing bush baby stuff, like finding food. Ants can't ruin a bush baby picnic because ants are a bush baby picnic. They're delish, but they're pretty feisty too. The question is, who can bite the other guy first? Of course, the bush baby always wins. Ouch! Pass us all out. Ooh. Next, let's meet some of the better-known primates. And who could that be? You're right, it's the monkeys. There are all kinds of monkeys all over the world. 
howlers and capuchins in South America, langurs in Asia, colobus monkeys in Africa, and don't forget the baboons. These guys live on the African plain in groups called troops. And here's the littlest member of the troop, Big Ears. He's got a big problem, and it's not just his name. You see, his mum was killed by a leopard, so his aunt took over. She lost her own baby just a short while ago, so they make a good pair. Big Ears, like all primate babies, needs a grown-up around not only to feed him, but to hug him and to teach him important stuff, like how to pick bugs, twigs, and dirt off other baboons. That's called grooming, and primates do it for three reasons. It keeps everyone in the group feeling close to each other, it keeps everyone clean, and hey, it's a free snack! Now, Big Ears also has to figure out where he fits in in the baboon group. Like all social animals, primates need to know who the leaders are and who the followers are. Baboons have a unique way of showing respect. It's called presenting. You just turn around and show your behind. Uh, well, you let them see your posterior, or, or you just show them your rear end. And if you're a baby baboon, why take any chances? Just show respect to everyone. Think of the problems he'd have with a snapping turtle. Little Big Ears has a lot to learn, but don't worry, he'll make it. With the help of his aunt and others in the troop, he'll be a big guy in the baboon bunch in no time. Now that we've checked out the monkeys, it's on to the apes. Now, I know that some people think that monkeys and apes are the same thing. Wrong. But how do you tell a monkey from an ape? Well, one way is to walk up to a primate, take a deep breath, and say, Hey, you big monkey! Yeah, I'm talking to you! Whoa! He must be an ape! Okay, here's the best way to tell monkeys from apes. Take a close look. Almost all monkeys have tails. Apes don't. And monkeys don't just have any old tails. No, sir. Many monkeys have a tail that's prehensile. That means it can grab things, almost like an extra hand. But uh, back to the apes. There are chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, and gibbons. Like all apes, gibbons don't have tails. But they're talented. Come on, I'll show you. Let's go to Asia and the country of Thailand to meet the La Gibbons. Like most primates, gibbons scream and yell and sing to communicate. This couple has practiced one of their favorite songs for years to get it just right. The husband and wife love serenade. Besides keeping mum and dad feeling close, the song helps keep other gibbons from trespassing on their turf. Meanwhile, their teenage son sticks to himself and practices until he's old enough to move out and find a home of his own to protect. Then, just maybe, he'll have his own hit tune in Thailand.